When I was 13, I started to teach myself how to program because of a video game. And now I have a computer science degree. When I was probably same age, 13 or 14, I also went to look up videos on how to use Blender, a 3D modeling and animation software, all because of some video game. And over the past eight or nine years now, learning online through videos and various online courses with myself as a motivator and someone who makes a curriculum or something to stick to, I've learned quite a bit about learning online and learning individually. Fortunately, self-learning is a skill in its own right and something that over the last two years of having online university and all has become evidently very useful. So, hey internet, my name is Mark, I'm a senior at NYU studying computer science and linguistics, and today I wanted to talk about self-learning. A while ago, I got a comment on Twitter from someone asking me what did I do when I was struggling in class? How did I use online resources to help me with that? So I wanted to take that and merge it into this conversation about how you can effectively learn things on your own with the resources available to you on the thing that is the internet. So this video is taking what I have understood over the past several years and boiling it down into some fairly straightforward language and bite-sized ideas. Now, I like to think that if I were to go back in time and tell myself, you know, maybe eight years ago, some of these tips, I still wouldn't implement them because there is a sense of understanding that comes out of it. My only goal with this video is to say something that gets you thinking and or to say something that lets you say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna try this. And as you try these things, you start to develop your own understanding. So the first part of this video will be talking about learning for learning's sake, tackling those projects you've always wanted to work on. The second half of this video will be learning for the sake of either getting ahead in your class or catching up, maybe you're struggling, maybe the professor is not so great, as we'll talk about my experience there. Without further rambling, let's jump into learning for learning's sake. Now, first thing is that learning online is totally possible. It's just a different environment. Zoom University has shown us that the world can sort of adapt to this teaching and learning online thing, but it's up to us as individuals to find the specific environment that works best for us. The online platform itself leaves you to make a choice. It is more difficult to focus in things like that. Perhaps I'll talk about that more in another video, but it is possible, long story short. The second thing is that unlike schools or universities, learning on your own might not have some explicit deadline or some consequence, like a grade. As a result, and I do say this a lot for many things, you need to create A, an incentive for yourself, and B, milestones to keep track of progress along the way. When I started learning programming, my incentive was 14-year-old Mark wanting to make Minecraft mods, and for a child, that was, that was plenty. Now, I think it was like the third course that finally did it for me in learning Java, but I think it was more so the timing that I found the course than the course itself. I'll recap the websites you can use to learn at the end of the video, but nonetheless, it's important to have an incentive for things because the course is important, a good teacher is important, but it's not going to work if you don't have a reason to sit down and learn something. So dig deep and find that. And also create milestones for yourself. Progress is so difficult because it is so elusive and we don't really notice it. One day you might be making a Java calculator, the next day you might be making a Minecraft plugin, and the day after that you suddenly make a Java web applet. Now obviously this won't happen over days, probably months as it did in my case, but keep track of these milestones so that you can look back and say, wow, <laughs> This uh, one file Minecraft plugin is super easy to make now for, for who I am now, but it was really difficult when I was, you know, 14. So it's really important to have milestones to look back on because they help us keep track of progress. And most importantly, it shows us that we are growing and that we can continue to grow. The third thing here is something that I still struggle with, especially with art. And that is when things seem more inherently difficult. I consider myself to be very bad at art, especially when I consider my skills in other areas, whether that be playing Mario Kart or editing videos. I personally think things become more difficult for two reasons. One, there are people who are already good at it, someone who might be very good at art already. And two, it's because we can more clearly see what we're bad at, in other words, by comparing to other people, than we can see what we're good at. 
Today, I see someone draw very well and I think, wow, like I wish I had that skill. But at the same time, something I don't realize is that when I started making videos in middle school at like 12 or 13, it was super basic. But now I'm doing some fairly advanced stuff in Premiere and different motion graphics and After Effects. And I forget how complex that can be. And people sometimes point that out to me. Now, if this editing time had gone into drawing, I'm sure my mindset would be flipped. Oh man, you know, I can draw, but wow, I really wish I could edit videos, especially if I still wanted to make videos in this alternate timeline of mine. This mindset is, is difficult. It's one of those things where, you know, past me wouldn't really understand it. I still don't understand it, but I think it's a good thing to acknowledge. Similarly, if you can identify these thoughts and work with them, not against them, they can become another reason to keep going. The fourth thing is that if you are learning something on your own and there's no other external deadline for this, it needs to be something you're interested in or interested at becoming good at while balancing the part that you enjoy. For example, I'm interested in becoming good at art because I want to draw characters and make character designs, but all of the art courses are going to be form, lighting, and perspective. So there's this fine balance of the hard stuff, the nitty gritty, and what we enjoy doing. The Drawbox website, and I'll leave a link in the description down below if you're curious, explicitly states that you should be doing these exercises, but please, please, you must balance also drawing for fun, no matter how good or bad it might be. Personally, that I took art too seriously at one point and took enjoyment out of the process itself. Make sure you balance what you like about a learning endeavor. So, you know, just drawing characters for fun, and remember why you're doing it because that reason will carry you through the hard stuff and nitty gritty. And bonus points, apply what you're doing to something outside. Point five is simply continuing onto this point. The commonality that I have found throughout all the courses I've taken, Game Dev TV, Drawbox, Neil's drawing course on Udemy, they all share the idea that you should absolutely create what you love and more specifically share that with other people. Put your work into the world because again, this is a way to track progress and it makes things real. Some online courses such as Udemy will give you challenges to complete and I think it's super important that we do these but also we do our own types of challenges. Focus on what you love to draw and with these challenges, with these courses that have a community around them, take the time to get out of your head and say, all right, here's what I'm working on. Feedback is not a bad thing, so be, be willing to open yourself up to it from both yourself and others. Consistency is the foundation of habit is point number six. Not a really a direct quote, but this is something I pretty much obtained from uh, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg several years ago. Set aside consistent times to do something, but start with just five minutes a day or one lecture a day. Don't try and jump into it because you wanna build the consistency of sitting down and starting something as opposed to trying to get through as much as you can. It's super important to build a consistent habit because once you can fall into the pattern of sitting down and clicking play or picking up your pencil and putting it to the sketch pad, then the rest will be easier in my experience. In these moments, especially for new things, when you wait for the motivation or incentive to come, it's not going to help you. It is not a reliable source of drive to get something done. Action itself, and I spoke about this in a devlog you can check out here, action itself will drive the motivation. So if you can build the habit of sitting down, hitting play, maybe that's all you do at the start, that is going to drive more action. In other words, self-discipline. There's really no substitute for it. These are the things that I believe to be at the core of my self-learning journey. What I use to power myself through the, the art projects, the Japanese learning, the, the self-assigned programming projects that I do every day. You need to start with some sort of intrigue. You need to find a deep reason to do something and then continue to dig deep for that reason in order to find the motivation for that thing. Because if you wait around for motivation, things might not happen. So if you can drive yourself to action, just 0.01% further down the line with these milestones that you're keeping track of, you will find yourself further along than you realize. Knowledge must be willed into existence through application. And one thing that forces you to do that is in-person classes that have seemingly real world consequences. So if you're feeling behind or you want to get ahead in the class, you can apply all of these, but there are some extra pros and cons to it. So let's jump into any classes you wanna get ahead in or might feel overwhelmed by or both. 
Now, at this point, let me know if there are points you think I missed or some that you would really strongly agree with in the comments. And maybe we can kind of push those up in the comments so that people can see what are the most important points. Nonetheless, my freshman year, my first semester, I took Calculus 2. Now, I, I love math and I still consider myself to love math, but college kind of ruined that for me during this experience. I wasn't really driven to learn Calc 2, even though I had places where I could apply it, but I also didn't have a great professor for it. They knew their stuff, but it just wasn't the best experience for me. However, Udemy was there for me. <laughs> I will leave a link to the specific course that I use in the description down below, but keep in mind it might not be the one for everybody. Uh, and it was this course that helped me kind of get through this class because it was a supplemental learning resource where I didn't have to devise uh, practice problems or go out of my way to find other classes syllabi. I also had Khan Academy, so for you math specific folks, definitely look into Khan Academy, whatever level of math you are, three blue, one brown, whatever. All those previous tips apply, and here are some specific things to keep in mind while you do an online course parallel to what might be an official course. The first thing is that you'll want to find a good website. If you're doing something like machine learning, then 3Blue1Brown on YouTube or Andrew Eng's course on Coursera would be great resources. If you're doing something like speed painting or Blender, then perhaps ArtStation or Udemy would be a much better option for you. My first recommendation would be to find very specific niche courses and websites for what you want to learn and maybe broaden up if going to niche is not what you need. In other words, if you're struggling on a specific concept, go niche, but if you're struggling in a broad sense, try to find a more general course. This one might be steeped in opinion, but some things can be more easily self-taught. For example, programming uh, versus literature. Programming can be learned individually a lot easier than philosophy, in my opinion and experience, but you have to be careful because when you program, you might teach yourself these methods and ways of doing things while well, there might be something better out there. So make sure to outsource, talk to people, look at Stack Overflow, whatever. With philosophy, it's almost dangerous to learn on your own, and while you should create your own understanding, make sure to discuss those ideas with others. There are things that can be more easily self-taught, but in general, if you can, and you really should look for, find something or someone where you can discuss these things. If your college class has a TA, talk to that TA about these things. If your high school course uh, has a great friendly teacher, stop by after school, see if you can strike up a conversation because as someone who I guess is a tutor and also is a student in these situations, it's honestly awesome to have someone come to you and be genuinely fascinated by the subject matter. Or even if they're struggling and don't like it, just the fact that you're showing up and saying, I'm struggling, or you know, I wanna get better at this, but I don't know what to do now, it's appreciated. So you know, you're not supposed to know everything when you start a class, and now I'm digressing, but work on self-teaching things, but do not be afraid to ask for help. Number three is that no one is here to rate limit you. In fact, you are here maybe because you are being rate limited in your education. So go ahead, do the things that you want to do. There are a few warnings here though. I've been told before not to get ahead on material, but I did it anyway and just tuned myself back when I you know, shouldn't have been ahead, but you can still do it. Find people to discuss and learn from. Talk through things with them. If you're struggling in a class, for example, a psychology class, then see if you can apply it to something that you enjoy. Diverge from the curriculum specifically. However, do be careful that you don't diverge too far because all of a sudden you might start learning information that feels relevant, but when you get to the exam, doesn't end up being so. So just make sure you stick to that curriculum, but don't be afraid to learn outside of it. Try to make a schedule that aligns with your class. I feel like this is sort of self-explanatory, but similar to that last point, you don't wanna to go too far ahead or too far away from the, the main class, the one with consequences, that you start to not know the material or start to learn other material, but you also don't want to be cramming these online courses the weekend before an exam. So do try and pace yourself with it. And remember, stay consistent. You don't wanna be chunking everything the night before. And yeah, the next point, which I've said already, Make sure your, your class is your first priority. Use these courses as a tool for studying, but not a replacement. I remember for the Calc 2 course I was taking on Udemy, there was this whole section of application to biology, which I found super interesting, but I didn't need any of it. And so it was in a sense, a waste of time because while the material was cool and I enjoyed it, it, it took away from the time that I should have been focusing on studying for the actual Calc 2 exam. 
So make sure you don't digress uh, from your main course is all I'm trying to say. But if you have the extra time and or mental energy, go for it. Lastly, and most importantly, nothing can replace practice and application. Whether you're practicing writing paragraphs for an essay or practicing problems for a math assignment, nothing will be truly learned if you don't practice it and if you don't apply it. I somehow expected to get better at calculus without doing practice problems, and that was one of the most helpful things of that Udemy course that I took. There were practice problems to do alongside things. It just told me what to do. Could I have gone out of my way to find practice problems from maybe another section of the course or go to the, the online textbook that we had and practice problems from there? I did that, sure, and that probably could have been the only thing that I did but I, I was under this an idea that if I just watch more videos, I'll become better at it. Thing is, if we don't, for example, with a math problem, go through the problem, find where we're stuck, we will never truly understand what the next step is. We have to sit there and think, okay, this integral, what's the next step? Okay, when you're writing an essay and you, you put together a beautiful outline, but you, you have a great quote and you're like, hmm, I don't know how to weave this the best. Well, keep that in mind. See if you can really try and then go, you know, look at that online writing course, then go talk to your TA because the more specific your problem, the more specific your question and the more specific your question, the more specific your answer. So yeah, when it comes down to it, sometimes the only external resource you need is simply more practice. There simply is no replacement for putting in the work. So last section of this video is just a real quick website rundown. Check out this video for a more in-depth review on all of these, but to quickly recap, I would recommend LinkedIn Learning for very professional, uh, very well put together and structured courses on just about anything tech related, probably. There are also drawing and blender courses on there. I would recommend Udemy uh, all around because I think the, the lack of professionality, they're professional courses, but there's, there's just less of an air of, you know, I'm some big shot or whatever. Would recommend, love Udemy. You can find anything and there are so many sales that you should be able to grab a course for like 15, $20. Masterclass. Uh, I actually have a video coming out this month, so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for it. But I would recommend Masterclass if you're someone who's genuinely intrigued in, in doing something on your own. Because watching a celebrity, for lack of a better word, or a well-known person learn the thing they love and just of the five courses I've taken, every single one has been like, yeah, no, I just... I just did this over and over again and then I just eventually, you know, found my own way of doing it. They, it just really demystifies talent and no specific course will, will get you somewhere specific. That digression aside, the last one is simply YouTube. This can be so great for finding niche content. StatQuest is the reason I, you know, got through the statistics portion of my intro to machine learning class. You can always find videos on there and so many times, at least for computer science, the comments will be like, wow, you explained in four minutes what I my professor couldn't teach me in a semester. So yeah, for more of a rundown, there's that masterclass video uh, on the side. As I said, all of this is purely experiential based. You know, I'm not a teacher myself. These strategies have worked for me and there's just simply to be thought provoking for you. So sit down, give them a shot. If you wanna get ahead in the class this term, if, you wanna, if you're feeling like you're struggling and getting behind, these can be great resources and great strategies in order to keep up with it all, to make sure your intrigue doesn't get torch down by the external pressure that is grades or something. And of course, with online learning, just a quick tip, uh, change up your environment, put your phone in another room, install a website blocker. The most important thing is just starting because sometimes when you start for the first five or 10 minutes on the project that you've always wanted to start in your life, the 50 minutes that come afterwards are incredibly easy. It's just getting there, that's the hard part. So thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Mark. I'd love to hear your thoughts, feedback, reflections in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video if you want to. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.